Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and as you can see we are starting with a first update in this year, in 2024, of our Mr. Olympia, current Mr. Olympia, Derek Lunsford. All the while we were so amazed by Nick Walker's conditioning in the offseason, Derek Lunsford actually managed to maintain basically the same level of conditioning, he's just as shredded as Nick Walker, and this is actually his front side, which is definitely his fattest, his least conditioned side. He's definitely way more shredded from behind, especially in the lower body. So he's known for not having the best separation, the best conditioning in the shoulders, in the chest, in his whole front upper body, legs too, also from the front. But here in this photo, his conditioning actually looks really good like really good, you wouldn't expect him to be this lean, two months, more than two months after the Mr. Olympia, so of course we gotta wonder, is he maybe prepping for the Arnold, it doesn't look like Derek, he has been doing only Mr. Olympia for who knows how long, uh, he is the Mr. Olympia that never won an open show, never did an open show, I think he qualified for the Mr. Olympia once in 2012, and every time, every year since then, he was qualified based on his placement at the Mr. Olympia, so it's been a really long time since this guy competed in any show other than Mr. Olympia. I don't even remember when was the last time, but, you know, it's really not like Derek to do other shows, to do the Arnold Classic. Yeah, he won the Mr. Olympia, but it wasn't a clear-cut win. It was a really controversial decision, so I'm sure he's focused on cementing his place at the top of the Mr. Olympia. I'm sure he wants a more convincing victory next year, and I believe that's all he cares about. I don't think he's gonna be jumping into the Arnold Classic, I don't think there is even a mention, a hint of him doing this, other than this physique update, in which he looks like he could do that show, and potentially, and probably, I guess, win it. And it would make sense if you ask me, because, guys, if you win Arnold Classic Ohio and UK, that's more money than winning the Mr. Olympia, and that's almost half a million dollars, guys, that's basically life-changing money. I mean, Derek would definitely benefit a lot from winning that money, I mean, at least, if nothing else, if he doesn't care about the accolades of having Arnold Classic win under his belt, at least there is a whole bunch of money in doing this. And again, the only hint, I guess, would be this physique update in which he looks basically 2-3 weeks out. Why is he maintaining this kind of conditioning? No, I'm not saying that he should just get fat in the offseason, but this is not much different than his Mr. Olympia look. Two months, over two months after Mr. Olympia? Why? Why? Is there a reason? Yeah, I believe he's doing his rebound very carefully, and he doesn't look like he went off, but even when I take that into consideration, I still believe there is a chance of Derek jumping in. Now, I don't know how Hardy would feel about this, being that both of them are from the same team, trained by the same coach, and, you know, Hardy just lost his Mr. Olympia to Derek, again, Hardy wasn't happy about it, and he seems very determined to win this Arnold Classic and to win all that money, so if Derek jumps in and he beats Hardy again, Hardy would be pissed, man, I don't know how would that work out, would they still be on the same team, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> but that's another reason why I don't think Derek is gonna do the Arnold Classic, even though he looks amazing at basically eight weeks out, he could jump in and probably win, but yeah, there are a couple of reasons for why I don't think that's gonna happen, and once again, he didn't say anything about it, which really doesn't mean much, he can just surprise everybody and jump in at the last moment, similar things happened before, but I gotta say, one thing is for sure, he looks like he could be prepping, and that's all, whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, next we got a very, very interesting update of Samson Dauda, it's a posing video, we're gonna watch it, he looks insane, but the caption here is what caught my attention, he says, first time posing since the hamstring injury, two days ago, 
So Samson apparently also tore his hamstring, just like Nick Walker. Now, I don't know how severe this injury is. I don't think it's as bad as what happened to Nick. And I'm wondering here, is Samson trying to call out Nick Walker? I mean, is he trying to make him look, make him seem weak? What do I mean by that? Well, you know, he's like... I tore a hamstring two days ago and here I am training and posing and I don't even care. Compared to Nick who is kind of a crybaby about it. I mean, <laughs> I'm just joking, of course. I know Nick Walker's uh, hamstring is definitely way more messed up than I don't know. I don't even know what happened to Samson. I mean, he just posted this and it doesn't look like there is anything wrong with it. It's an injury, but how bad this injury is? Is it even a tear? I don't know, but here he is, posing, looking insane, looking really good, definitely looking way more impressive from the front, look at this most muscular, damn, like, this guy is freaking big and round, and his conditioning is amazing for this point in prep, but he had a hamstring injury, how bad this injury is, on which leg is it, do you guys see it, can you find it? Maybe it's the left one, he can't really flex it all the way, but I don't know, I don't really see any bruising or anything like that, everything looks good, his back poses are definitely not his best poses, but here he looks good, I think that back is really significantly improved, I mean over the past few years, look at the lat spread especially, like it's a wide lat spread, it's really thick, really massive, uh, back double not as good but also improved a lot it's definitely better it's okay it's fine it's not great like Derek's or as good as Nick's but it's definitely improving and as far as the hamstring injury there is nothing I can see so I don't think this is a big injury it's probably not even a tear maybe like some sort of a strain I don't know I guess we'll find out soon enough hopefully it's nothing serious and he will be able to continue his Arnold prep once again, at 8 weeks out, damn, he looks crazy, he looks insane, check this out, wow, wow. Also, at 8 weeks out, we got this classic physique competitor, potentially winner of Arnold Classic, Urs Kalecinski, and this is a posing video of him with Nathan Diasha. Uh, this time around, Urs didn't blow up like his last offseason, he stayed, I wouldn't say leaner, because he was also very lean, when he blew up like that, uh, he was just maybe a little bit more watery, but definitely a lot bigger. Now, he stayed, I would say, smaller. He stayed within the classic physique weight cap. I mean, I don't think he ruined his conditioning at all, basically. He, he stayed in the contest shape, really. I mean, this is, this is one week out. This is one peak week out of a contest. So, yeah, he stayed really dry. That's the word, really dry. He didn't get much bigger, he probably gained very little weight, so I'm expecting him to look pretty much the same as usual at the Arnold Classic. And now, of course, the question is, can he win the Arnold Classic? Well, in order to win, he needs to beat his biggest rival, and that's Ramon. I mean, last year at the Arnold Classic, it was a solid battle. You guys probably know that I prefer Ursus Physique in terms of classic lines, I think he's definitely more classic than Ramon, but I can definitely see the point for why Ramon is beating Gors. He's, you know, more complete, his upper body is fuller, he's just bigger, and he brings also very good conditioning. So, can Urs beat Ramon? As long as Ramon brings his A game, it's probably not gonna happen. Also, at the Mr. Olympia, Urs wasn't even in that first call out. The first callout was two men only, Sibam and Ramon, and Urs was in the second callout, so basically that puts Ramon Dino in a different tier than Urs Kalecinski, like he's top tier, him and Sibam and that's the first callout, those two guys are battling, those two guys are much better than everybody else, and then in the next callout, in the next tier, you have Urs. So, I think Ramon kind of established himself as the top runner at this Arnold Classic. He's gonna be the guy to beat for sure. He won it last year. So, can Urs do something to beat him? I don't think so. I think all Urs can do is just show up at his best, as he always does, and hope 
that Ramon is gonna mess it up somehow. Is that gonna happen? Who knows? But I wouldn't bet on Urs. Even though I like his physique, I like his classic lines, I don't think he's gonna beat Ramon. I think Ramon is that much better. And here is an interesting uh, pose down between Urs and Nathan Diasha. As you can see, Urs is out angling Nathan by a couple of steps. <laughs> and Nathan is allowing it. I guess he doesn't care because he is definitely much bigger. But Urs actually did a good job out angling Nathan because he doesn't look much smaller, any smaller. But it would definitely be a different story if they stood in a line. Anyways, yeah, maybe Urs someday is gonna switch to open bodybuilding. I mean, he's really holding himself back. You know, staying basically contest ready year round in order not to grow, so he doesn't have to suffer too much to make the weight. I think he can grow enough for open bodybuilding. Is he gonna do it? Who the hell knows? I don't think he has any plans of doing that anytime soon. But you guys tell me in the comment section what do you think, what he's gonna do at the, at the Arnold Classic. Can he win? Can he beat Ramon? Whichever part of this video, guys, you found interesting, tell me in the comment section whatever you think. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to show some support, click that subscribe button. Help me reach 50k subscribers. Thank you guys so much. See you soon in the next video. All the best and bye-bye.